Well, hello guys, it's Kevin back in the woods again. No place I'd rather be. Thanks for coming along with me, I appreciate it. Oh, did you see the blue hair in there? But today I am out here looking for the ever elusive chanterelle mushroom. I found them around this pond in the past, so that's a good place to start. But it's also a good idea to go ahead and note the day, the time, even the temperature. And if you do find mushrooms, and I do, you want to also note which trees you found them around because they have a symbiotic relationship with certain trees. So I'm going to double check, but I'm almost certain these are chanterelles, uh, not jack-o'-lanterns. Both of these are chanterelles. The first was golden chanterelles. These are smooth chanterelles, but these are jack-o'-lanterns and are poisonous. These are not. These are not chanterelles. These are golden gill geronima. And you can see to the untrained eye, they look very similar, only these grow on decaying wood and chanterelles do not. Yeah, 100% uh, chanterelles. Fantastic. This is a good little score here too, and they're all fresh. That is a nice one. So one way to tell chanterelles from like the false chanterelle is that it doesn't have true gills. They're more like folds. So I'm gonna leave some. I already got a good haul here. I like to leave some for other foragers or the natural wild animals that like these as well. So all I'm saying is that you have to be careful and you're not going to be able to identify edible mushrooms simply by watching a single video. So I know a lot of people are against these monocrops, these conifer monocrops, but I'm still kind of undecided myself. They grow so fast. They fill up fields that are now fallow. As far as mycrology goes, the mushrooms love these. I found four different species of mushrooms under just this little clump already. And it offers a buffer for deer and for me if it starts to pour down rain. So the sequence of mushrooms I'm about to show you are all amanitas of some variety. I don't really go in for the hocus pocus of Latin nomenclature, I'll be honest. But it's hard not to learn amanitas because they have such a fabled history. So all amanitas, or most all amanitas, are poisonous to some degree. Some are lethal. Some, according to some, have psychedelic properties. The fly agaric, or the amanita muscaria, which I mistakenly identify uh, one of these false Caesar mushrooms for. Guys, I'm super excited to find one of these. I've never seen a uh, fly agaric or Amanita muscaria before. I didn't even know they grew around here. This is the classic Christmas mushroom. You can see the little white scales on it. It's definitely got a bulbous base there. Um, has a long and fabled history of being a psychoactive mushrooms. Um, some mushroom cults in Siberia even evolved to catch the urine of the sages because they urine uh, had the active ingredient muskimol in it and they would drink the urine to get high. The question you guys want to know is have I tried these mushrooms? And the answer is of course I have. A story for another time. Right now let's just appreciate the mushroom. Um, John Allegro actually wrote a book about these. Let me move you guys in. He claimed that Christianity was originally kind of a psychedelic sex cult and this mushroom um, or mushrooms in general were phallic symbols which of course they were in the ancient world uh, but it's a complicated book and not many people understand it because you'd have to basically know many different languages ancient languages to understand his argument I did read it I didn't understand much of it check that out Come on, tell me that's not cool. That's the false Caesar all grown up. Full veil, partial veil around the cap. You can see the partial veil is unfolded. 
Um, that will turn into a ring as it gets bigger. There's the ring. It's so big, look at that. All right, let's move back to edible mushrooms. So these are gem studded puffballs, which are edible. But if you cut them in half and they look like this, if they're black inside, they are not true puffballs and they are not edible. But they look almost identical to the untrained eye. So be mindful of this. If they're black, poisonous. If they're white, they're probably a puffball. And most puffballs are edible. Now see, these are still not growing on wood chips. Um, there is one pine tree back there. Right here, I'm under red oak. The other thing to feel for is if the studs flake off, you got a gem right. studded puffball. But if you can find some old ones and the pores puff out, you know what you got. Right here's some uh, more Indian's pipe. I found this the other day. Some people say this is rare, though I see it often. I don't think it's that rare. Um, it is an interesting plant, though. This is not actually a mushroom. It does live off of, symbiotically, a fungus that grows in the ground. Um, that might be its fruiting body right there, actually. But yeah, this is only, this is not a mushroom, but really cool looking plant nonetheless. All right, let's get into the kitchen. Cooking with Kevin. So you gotta have the bacon, but I cooked up the chanterelles, the coral mushroom, a bit of the studded puffball with some noodles. Delicious. Very good. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I know I sure did. That was delicious. And hunting for mushrooms is one of my favorite things to do. Um, a new love of mine in the last, say, three years. I am obviously so far from being an expert. Um, uh, it's not the purpose of this video. I just wanted to take you along with me. I am currently, however, working on a really in-depth, more philosophical video about learning how to see, how to identify new things in the wood. It has a much broader implications and it will be the next video that I post and I hope you guys will come along with me on that. It's going to be a very different kind of video, but I think it will be um, very exciting uh, to see the get the comments back and get in a conversation with you guys about this topic. Not just learning how to identify things, but learning how to see more specifically, more broadly um, in nature and also in our lives. Well, I will quit waxing philosophical for the time being. Um, until the next video, I hope you guys are well. Stay safe. See you on the next one. Check out this. Fungus on fungus action. Does that turn you on a little bit?